As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark World Labor Day, the breakfast this morning takes critical look at the state of the Nigerian labor market. And uh, as we grapple with internally displaced persons within the country, occasioned by communal farmer header clashes, we also are faced with having to ferry home our citizens from war-torn countries around the world, like Ukraine, Russia, and Sudan. Today, we will look at a critical issue the mental health consequences of fleeing conflict zones. We'll also be taking a look at the headlines of the newspapers, national newspapers today, and of the press, we'll have someone join us to analyze the headlines on The Breakfast this morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen. My name is Nyam Gul. Welcome to Mindset of Monday as it is. Uh, we're hoping that you're going to have a very positive mindset this morning and it is Workers' Day. Congratulations to all the workers and we're hoping that your conditions of service will <laughs> keep improving. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations indeed. And uh, yes, we hope that your conditions of service will improve. Of course, today everyone is talking about the state of the Nigerian worker. What mm -hmm. is the state of the Nigerian worker? Mm -hmm. And in analyzing that, you cannot take away the fact that people will begin to assess how this outgoing president uh, administration of uh, headed by president Muhammad buhari has treated workers well uh, when the federal government answers the people who are complaining they will say it is unprecedented the kind of uh, <laughs> welfare packages that this administration has given and in fact it is this administration that conceived uh, a, a raise in their salaries which will not be implemented anyway <laughs> but oh, well. a lot of things will be said that is so good you know this administration has done well buhari himself said he employed 60,000 uh, army men in his for eight years in office well <clears throat> well you have to give it to this government in some areas i mean when they came in the minimum wage was 18,000 naira mm -hmm. and then they moved it to 30,000 naira which has not been implemented in any way in some states in some states yeah. it's been implemented yeah. there are a few states where it's not been implemented and they set up a committee a monitoring committee mm. to um, monitor the level of compliance across the states but as you said some states have not complied up to today well, so what did the monitoring, uh, com the monitoring committee do? Uh, like your rap people will say, if you ask committee me, called go ask? monitoring lizard. Who I go ask? Okay. Well, but um, like we said, we're hoping for the best all the time uh, for the people who uh, whose states have not implemented the thirty uh, thousand naira minimum wage. At least God is implementing a program that is making you survive <laughs> as it were yes well don't forget that just last week the federal government implemented 40 percent raise for workers federal workers although we also had uh, the protest implemented by, or approved 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 mm -hmm. uh, by uh, the federal government last week and then we did have some section of the federal workers protesting their exclusion mm -hmm. especially in the health sector, health sector yeah. protesting their exclusion from that 40 percent that mm. was given to federal workers but then if you look at all of these that's been given to the the, the 30 percent minimum wage the 40 percent that was given to them last week and and vis-a-vis -vis the fact that market women and men are also looking out for whenever the nigerian worker gets any kind of raise mm -hmm. to increase the prices of food uh, you begin to wonder mention landlords as well yeah. anyway. <laughs> landlord transportation hike uh -huh. everything and, and 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 also you would also consider the fact that um, uh, the, the, the inflation rate increased mm -hmm. from 2015 when it was in 2015 it was at 9.01 percent the inflation in nigeria now it's double nine point digits. yeah now it's 22.04 percent which so the, is terrible which is terrible so the, the state of the nigerian worker is is one that is not to be envied especially you know we're talking about the removal or not of the fuel subsidy it will, and it, so it when will you compare happen. the life the living standard of a nigerian who is a member of opec hmm. 
It's annoying. With that of our counterparts it, living in other OPEC nations. It's annoying. Sometimes when you talk about these things, you complain about these things. They tell you that even in other countries, um, they pay they pay X Y Z for tax. Uh, they pay X Y Z for fuel. They pay X Y Z for that. And then you ask them. In countries that you're comparing us to, what is their minimum wage? Mm. The minimum wage in some countries is more than the, the, the salary of a, a director here in Nigeria. And you're talking the kind of things that you're talking. And to talk about minimum wage, you know, you are approving it and all that. What is left for the next administration to do, especially in a country that is neck deep in debt? Why not? I don't know if the incoming administration had any input into what should be implemented or should be approved. Uh, why not consult with them to see if it is 20% that is feasible so that when they come, because they are the ones that will implement it. If you can postpone censors because you want the next administration to be the one to handle it, you postpone a fuel subsidy removal because you say the timing is bad, that is because you're leaving, and so many other things. Why not postpone this one? You're just raising the hopes of people. And when the next administration comes, we know that Nigeria, even though they say that government is a continuum, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, well, maybe in this case where it is the same party, the same ruling party, the APC, uh, that is being handed over to, huh. perhaps that continuum, that continuity, uh, perhaps we'll see that. And then when you're comparing what Nigerians are earning, and what our counterparts or in other parts of the country, mm. uh, the world the are world. earning. What brings to mind is the exchange rate. Mm -hmm. What is even the worth of what we're earning? Mm -hmm. What is it's, the worth of our Naira? It's, it's, it's just terrible. Today, it, it, the official rate of the Naira stands at 460 Naira per dollar. In 2015, when it was just 18,000, it was 219. And how many so people the purchasing can, power of this salary that's been access, increased. How many people can even access this uh, uh, official rate, this, mm. this dollar at official rate? When you're talking dollar, you talk black market, whether we like it or not. Exactly. Even though uh, the federal government at one point shut down uh, someone who was giving us details on uh, the uh, black market and all that, I don't want to mention his name, but uh, they said that he is the reason the black market is is flourishing and uh, he's misleading a lot of people but since he was he was shut down till now he hasn't changed anything. nothing has changed so <laughs> what did you do what what improvement did you get by just shutting down someone who was making a living and also informing people because a lot of people were going there to find out what the market value for a dollar is every day and they shut it's, him it's down out there it really is out there there's no secrecy about it so, you want to sell dollar i want to buy dollar you know where to go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we know where to go <laughs> <laughs> we know where to go <laughs> anyway it's still uh, um mindset monday that's how we call it and it is the breakfast on plus tv africa and we're hoping you're going to stay on like we said we're going to be talking about mental scars of the conflict and wars that we experience all around the world and what it means to the people who are being ferried out of these countries. Sudan is at war. Ukraine and Russia are at war. And so many other countries uh, could be at war. And Nigerians must be in all these countries. Like they say, if you go to a country and you don't find a Nigerian, do not stay. It's not safe. <laughs> it's not safe it's for not you. Safe you for must you. find a Nigerian somewhere. So we'll be looking at all, all these ones. But um, I, I think uh, we should just immediately go to the press. Yes, we mm. should. Mm -hmm. About 7.30, we'll be joined by uh, Opunabo in Kotaria, who will be uh, looking at these headlines individually and give us insight uh, to what he feels about the headlines. In the meantime, we'll go back to the trending issues as a follow-up of what we have just read from the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, to the trending issues now. Um, I'd like to start with uh, NAF departs uh, to evacuate Nigerians from Egypt. That is the Nigerian Air Force plane has departed. It departed actually on Saturday night for mm. the evacuation of Nigerians stranded in Sudan from Egypt. I was hoping that at this time, all of them had reached Nigeria. And now that we're hearing that there are some who are even undocumented, like we, we talk, talked about, yeah. that there may be some people who are undocumented. So did the federal government make plans for 
emergencies like this. Let me call them emergencies because they're still our citizens, and I don't know how they're going to do what they're going to do about that. Well, that's a valid question, but what we all know, what we know for sure, I do not have the answer to that mm -hmm. because I do not work with NEMA. <laughs> <laughs> but what we do know is that the first batch have arrived in Egypt. They arrived on Friday. Uh, 137 of them have arrived, and the second batch were leaving, where, where they left on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The second batch left on Saturday. 29 buses left on Saturday to Egypt from Sudan. Yeah. So that's the much we know. Uh, would they arrive today? We don't know. Okay. We can only speculate and guess. But as you have said, we had expected that by today, would have heard or yeah. over the weekend yeah. would have heard that the first batch if not all of them mm -hmm. have come into the country but the last we know is that um, the first batch have arrived egypt wait, waiting to be airlifted and that the second batch the, of buses have left sudan for egypt okay well let's hope that they are going to arrive uh because if a hundred and something is the number we have that has reached egypt out of 5,500 that we were expecting, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really a very small number. It and is. now that we're hearing that the undocumented ones, which I'm sure were not part of the 5,500, are not, still there. So undocumented I, I don't know. The federal government has to do something about it. The trauma of being in a war, a war zone is enough already. And then having to think that maybe, maybe, you are abandoned because that's what will come into the mind of the people who have not been evacuated as at this moment that we're talking about. Well, God help us. Yeah, the federal government also, that's uh, from NEMA, they've, they've also advised Nigerians uh, to stop knocking them uh, with regards to the money, the 1.5 million mm. that has been dollars earmarked for this exercise because this is a war situation mm -hmm. according to them and things negotiations are difficult mm -hmm. at this time so the buses that you would have rented for a certain sum on a normal day would not cost you the same it will cost you during a war situation but we that's why government must at all times try to win the confidence of the people People don't trust our government anymore. For instance, the time of COVID was a time of emergency, and there were palliatives. Palliatives were hoarded by the same government. Hoarded so, and allowed to waste. Yeah, so how, how do you now explain to the people that, okay, in terms of emergency, there are problems that we are facing and all that and all that. When there were no problems, they couldn't do what should be done. How will the people trust them and stop knocking them if from the past we know how they have behaved with the things that they should have given us uh, you know without any problem so government should seek at all times to win the trust of the people so that whatever they do people will get to believe them because if the people don't believe no policy will work no policy will work in a country where they don't believe because they're always suspecting you uh if government is giving me this what are they taking from me even and though I don't that see is it. why this debate it's about removal of fuel subsidy is, is, is so, um, so controversial and so divided. Mm -hmm. Because those who are saying remove it, they have the reasons. They see this lack of trust you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that say it's an organized crime against the people. Because, I mean, NNPC, our, our, our four major refineries are just not working. NNPC mm -hmm. accounts for just 8%. 8%, and that's according to uh, an OPEC report, accounts for 8% of the foreign use in the country. And so we import how many percent? 92%. And that's what gave birth to this subsidy in the first place, because government then has to make up for the cost of uh, uh, you know, importing this quantity into the country. So those who are saying, remove this subsidy, are saying, let us fix the refineries. Mm. Stop importing. Mm -hmm. Let it let us get, give ourselves this oil that we need. And those who are uh, benefiting from this subsidy will stop having the benefits of, because the controversy surrounding the quantity of uh, oil that we import, the quantity of oil that we use on the daily, and, and everything, the secrecy surrounding that sector. So those who are saying it is an organized crime are saying, 
let's stop this so that we can stop the leakages. We can stop the oil theft. And then those who are saying, don't remove it, like labor. Mm -hmm. It's one of the questions we're going to ask our guests who's going to represent labor today. Labor does not want it removed. And you can understand that. Because imagine what will happen when they remove subsidy from fuel importation. The cost of living will just go up the roof. Are Nigerians ready for that? Look at how subsidy has been removed from, okay, when they talk about oil, removing subsidy from oil, they're really talking about petrol, okay, because diesel has no subsidy anymore. How much are we buying diesel today? Mm -hmm. It's a, almost a thousand naira that we're buying diesel. Now, government will say if we remove subsidy, there will be money left to do other things. But do we trust them to do those things? With the money. School feeding came. Humongous amount was spent. I didn't see where the students were fed. I saw on social media one miserable looking portion from agege bread <laughs> and one miserable looking portion of stew made with, you could just see palm oil floating on top of uncooked tomatoes with nothing inside of it um, given to a child in one of the schools in, in one of the eastern, uh, western states. And you, may I wept for Nigeria it's, when it's I saw It's a terrible that. thing. We don't trust government. The government should know this. We don't trust government. We the people, I'm talking, I'm talking like the people don't trust government. That doesn't mean that government is not working, but government should do their best to make sure that people trust them so that when policies come, people can contribute. Dividends of democracy is not building roads. It's not building uh, skyscrapers or anything. It's not doing what you normally should do because even the military administration do the same things. Dividends of democracy is representation, the ability for everybody to have a voice in that government, to choose what they want and how they want to be governed. That is evidence of democracy. You can't build a bridge and tell me it's evidence of democracy. IBB built Third Mainland Bridge. That was not a civilian government. So mm -hmm. you don't tell me that what you should ordinarily do as a governor or as a head of state or as a president is evidence of democracy when I'm being gagged, when I don't have information to what you're doing all right so as we wrap up top trending uh, resident doctors is another uh, top trending mm -hmm. uh, they, they've given the federal government the two or three weeks ultimatum uh, for salary structure review the issue of con mess has been going on for mm -hmm. a long time for ages yeah and i wonder why uh, the health sector appears to be neglected of all sectors of all sectors and all sectors. i just i just saw what the Minister of Information said uh, this morning, that uh, uh, the Buhari administration's intervention in the health sector is unprecedented. unprecedented. <laughs> so, so everything is unprecedented. unprecedented. So if you are neglecting the, go the doctors or nurses and all that, then who else are you putting in your review of the salary structure of workers? Well. well I think we'll just uh, take a short break and return with our guest that will be talking on the newspaper headlines. Stay with us.